Hi! So today Elise and I are going to be making mineral broth. Um, it's an awesome vegetarian vegan alternative to a normal stock uh, like a veggie stock or something like that but it's also really therapeutic and nutrient dense. It's something I frequently recommend for my clients that are really struggling with um, low energy, chronic inflammation, are going into a surgery coming up, they're not recovering well, they've got some underlying you know, core infection or something like that. This broth is so nutrient dense, it's got all these veggies, which I'll highlight um, in the ingredient section for you. Um, and all of these veggies that are uh, cooked into the broth, and the nutrients from the veggies, this celery is super loud. All right, so I'm gonna pass it to you and you put it in the pot, okay? Um, all of these veggies, all of the nutrients from them is going to leach into the broth, and then we're going to be able to discard the excess, the fiber, or you can use it as thickener in your soup or something like that. Um, and you're going to just have this amazing cup of, don't forget these leaves, oh. this amazing cup of uh, broth that's just gonna nourish straight to your mitochondria. It skips the digestion, all that you know, stuff that your body has to do. And it just fuels you. Um, so we had a whole bunch of celery. We uh, gave these guys all a little bit of a wash in the Dr. Bronner's um, like baby Castile soap. We didn't really, we don't want to scrub them. And we were going to keep all these good things on the outside. We want the skin on everything that we're going to put in the broth. So one big bunch of celery, the leaves and all. Um, and then we're going to do two onions with the skins on. And there's actually a lot of nutrients in the skin that we miss out on when we're cooking, obviously not something we're looking to try to chew our way through and our stir fry is onion skins or garlic skins or you know whatever the bitter kind of carrot skins. Um, but for this broth, we're gonna leave it in because we're trying to enhance this nutrient density of our like therapeutic food we're making here. Um, so we had our two onions, skins on. We're gonna do six carrots. This is one of the easiest soups you'll ever make because you basically just have to Make sure you are got your veggies from a good source, they're a little clean, and you kind of just rough chop them. So we've got our six carrots, which are going to add a lot of uh, nutrition in there. We've got our red potatoes, right? All the different colors are have different phytonutrients um, and, and minerals in them that are gonna use, we're gonna use in this stock. Um, I don't always use it as a base for things, because I feel like you want to all this effort to make this broth. I just drink it because it's awesome and delicious and, you know, good. Um, but you totally can use it as a base for soups. You can use it as, you know, to soak or cook your beans or your rice in or something like that. Those are all fine options. So we have two different kind of similar dudes, but they're different. <laughs> similar but different. This is a sweet potato. This is a garnet yam. They're different because they have a different complex of nutrients that are inside of them. The garnet yam, as its name suggests, is much redder, having different flavonoids, different levels of manganese. Oh, thank you for showing. That was very helpful. Um, in So this is the sweet potato guy that went in, and this is going to be our garnet yam. And there is a reason that you use the different forms. And that is because we're trying to create a full complex. Like we want this to be hitting as many markers as is physically possible um, with one little broth. So Lisa's filling up the pot here. We've got six-ish cloves of garlic, which for me usually just means a head of garlic because garlic all the things. The pot is getting full. <laughs> it's getting full, you're right. Um, and we use the largest pot we have except for one. We have one bigger one, but we wanted a little extra thick layer. It's more of like a canning pot. So we have our garlic, which is a lot. We just chopped it in half. We have two bay leaves. Cooking with fresh herbs is phenomenal for your health. And I teach more about that in my sauces and seasonings cooking class and online lectures. Um, fresh herbs, oh here, sorry. $1.49 at the store for a whole pack of those fresh bay leaves or rosemary or thyme or sage. I, Make an awesome turkey sage sausage. Um, oh, we don't need to do anything to this. Um, so fresh herbs, amazing way to increase your health and wellness. We added our, oh man, it's getting full. We added our bunch of fresh parley, parsley here. Often you add those kind of herbs if you're looking to enhance the flavor towards the end because you don't want to kill it. But for this guy, we're going to cook it so low and slow that it's not going to matter so much. And then we have our leek, great source of sulfur and other 
we're gonna do oh I didn't want that one he had a weird thing on him yeah thanks <laughs> um, sulfur flavor awesomeness then we have some all-spice berries here Elise was worried earlier but they're deli they're delicious smelling aren't they yeah thumbs up so here put them in there um, you can also use juniper berries, right? All of these ingredients are strategically added to enhance the nutrient density of this so that we get an awesome full complex of goodness and awesomeness and greatness. This is our kombu. You can put that in there. Kombu is basically seaweed. Um, it is amazing for increasing minerals. So I add kombu to my, um, when I cook beans from scratch, often to um, like stocks and things like that and this this is gonna actually unfold and become this kind of big sheet of awesome seaweedy goodness but that's gonna be really awesome especially for thyroid endocrine anything like that we're really enhancing those minerals that are necessary for our endocrine system to function appropriately so the only thing left basically to do with this stock is we need to add some clean good water and at the very end we're gonna add salt so we have an RO system a reverse osmosis system at our house um, but this is one of the, one, the shortcuts you don't want, so we could use our, our house water is what I'm saying. But this is one of the shortcuts you don't want to skip out on because of the chlorination and probably fluoride in your city water. Um, that's going to have a potential to counteract with all the good mineral goodness we've got going on here. So we want to use clean, like purified water for the hopefully that hasn't gone through like chlorination or anything like that. So we're going to fill this bad boy up. You ready for your shower lace? And then we're gonna put it on the stove. <laughs> we're gonna put it on the stove on high um, just until it comes to a boil. And I'll show you what to do next. So my broth has finally come to a boil. It takes a hot minute when there's this much water and it's crammed with all of these awesome veggies. Um, whoa. So I covered it when I, when I brought it to a boil for several reasons to help it go quicker and to just keep, kind of keep everything in. So this step is an important one that's often skipped, especially when people are making bone broth and things like that. And as that is, once you bring it to a boil, you want to skim the scum that's formed on the top. Skim the scum. So there's going to be a little bit of a film. I'm not capturing any good ones to show you. There we go. Maybe. Right. And we've just got, you've probably seen it when you've made broth before. There's just kind of a film on the top. I know, I know, sorry, boiling over. Um, that's why the directions for this say fill two inches below the lid, but I was like, nah, I don't want to. Um, so I'm gonna skim all of this little bubbly gunk that has formed at the top, and that's kind of our excess junk that we don't want. When we're talking about bone broth and beef and chicken and whatever stocks, um, even fish, that little scuzz that comes up on the top, that's a lot of the toxic junk that we really don't want in our broth. Especially if we're doing all this work to make these therapeutic, you know, broths, we don't need anything else that's going to take away from that. So that's, if you find, if you're using like beef bones, I'm totally getting off topic here. If you're using beef bones that are grass fed, you're going to have a lot less of the scuzz and the film on the top. Um, to take off and the same I find with vegetables like if I've given them a little bit of a wash in the Dr. Bronner's if I bought organic sources especially local something like that I have a lot less gunk on the top and that just kind of speaks to the quality of the, the juice themselves hot so this guy is going to simmer with the lid off on low for between two to three hours usually I'm solid two and a half I kind of have a pattern where I start it when I know that I can um get it off the stove in about two and a half hours. And I'm gonna check every once in a while just to make sure that the veggies aren't peeking out too much above the water. It's a pretty crammed pot of stuff, so um, they are gonna peek out a little bit, but if I need to add some water later on, if too much evaporates, um, I'll do that. Otherwise, we're just gonna keep it low, low, low. So basically all the way low. If you're just having a little blip of a bubble every once in a while, you're doing great. Um, we'll give it a gander and make sure all the veggies are crazy soft at two and a half hours in. And then we'll add some salt to um, good mineral salt, which is going to add just to the mineral goodness of this dish. Um, and then the hardest part of the whole thing is straining it. And then Bob's your uncle, you've got this epic healing, nourishing broth that's going to totally get you through. So, all right, we'll check back in in a little bit after this guy has chilled for a bit on the stove. All 
All right, so it's been about four hours uh, because I got distracted. Um, but it was fine because my veggies aren't like aren't, aren't peeking out of the water too much and they're really good and mushy. You want to make sure they're nice and mushy because sometimes you can have it too low. Not usually. Usually, you know, a, a nice low and slow is going to get all those nutrients out. But you want to make sure that they're pretty decent mush. Um, you don't want a lot of firmness left. So this is literally the hardest part about making this broth is straining it. I do recommend you wait until it cools for a little bit so that you don't scald yourself. But that's, you know, up to you. If you want to scald yourself, feel free. Um, you're going to need a fine mesh strainer for this. A regular strainer is going to let bits through. If you don't mind bits in your broth, that's fine. You can have it that way. Um, but my people around here do not go for that. So you just need to strain it in batches. Some people use the leftover... Man, make a big mess, why don't you? Some people use the leftover... Uh, more starchy veggies, uh, like the sweet potato or other things like that, to be thickeners um, if they're making stoops and stews and those kind of shenanigans. Um, and you can totally do that. You can save out the carrots if you want to try that. Most of the nutrient value, we hope, right, has leached into the, this really, oh my gosh, amazing smelling broth. It just smells... I don't know. It smells good. It smells earthy like, I don't know, something that you intuitively know is going to make you feel better inside. Um, and it will. It'll do that. So um, I've got my broth here. I'm going to dump out extra pieces. Uh, like when we make beans and things like that, we'll use the, co the actual kombu that's left. We'll dice it up fine into the beans or just cook it with the beans like it is um, because that's a really great mineral event source. But I'm going to finish straining this and then I'm going to store it in a glass container on the counter. If you're like me, you use leftover things like pickle jars. Um, and we're going to store this on the counter until it cools down, and then we're going to put it in the fridge. Uh, and it's going to keep for quite a while. It doesn't usually last that long around here. If after a week or two, I would say a couple weeks, you haven't got around to drinking it, use it in some soup or freeze it or anything like that. It's going to be totally fine. You're really going to lose a lot of the minerals. Great timing, go.